There's been several though 90s bands reunions lately. I think yeah. people are all waxing nostalgic again about that time period. Yeah. Having been through it, what do you think is so special about that decade as opposed to music now? Oh wow. Um, I don't know. You know, it's a. I don't know if it's like. Is it? You think it's, it was really special? You know, like. Yeah. Well, our cameraman. I mean, it feels the special scenes, to was me. Was talking right? about the show he saw you guys playing here when you opened for Dinosaur Junior. And how much he oh, wow. still remembers that show. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was June in 94, 96, was it? Oh, yeah, probably. But is that because of our youth, our relative <laughs> youth? or yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's what We're the thing is hard old. to figure out. Like, yeah, for me, too, that was really exciting. But probably for someone who's, like, you know, 25 now, this is, like, really school, exciting. Yeah, that was really exciting, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah. Um, I mean, I think that, that a lot of that music is still pretty relevant. Mm -hmm. So, um... If anything, I think the music back then was was rawer than it is yeah. today. You know, like there's a lot of perfection in a studio and yeah, life. it's okay. kind of it's kind of it's kind of different. So um, I don't know. Maybe it was like like I was about '60s bands. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like '60s garage bands or something yeah. like that. I don't know. It's hard for me to to say with the perspective of what people who weren't around during that time period what they find appealing about it. Yeah. You know, so. In fact, I was reading um, that a big influence for you when you were in your growing up and in your youth was Patti Smith, and that you'd travel yeah. to New York to see her. Yeah. Um, what what sort of impression did she leave on you? And were there other people that influenced you early on? Um, I mean, Patti Smith. I mean, it was, it was definitely one of those radio mom moments of like, you know, I was like 16 probably, and yeah. sitting, you know listening to the, the only stereo that I was allowed to listen to because my brother had the other one, so I was listening to like the stereo in my dad's office and Gloria came on and it was just like one of those, who is this, you know, like yeah. immediately <laughs> calling up the radio station, you know, who is this person? And it was kind of like a really, really super immediate, immediate type thing. And I immediately like went and found horses and I was pretty blown away. And I think that was before I got into punk because that was like 75 or 76. And then I saw this girl in high school who was always really, she wasn't really weird, but she was very mysterious and she always wore black and she didn't have any friends and she didn't talk to anyone. And I always thought she was really cool yeah, like, exactly. looking and she's like a year older than me. And one day she came in like, and she was wearing a Patti Smith t-shirt and I said something, I was like, I think we were in art class together. She was an artist, but I was not. But um, I don't know why I was taking art. I only took it ever once, but um, I said something like, Oh, you like Patti Smith too? And so that was sort of a bonding moment. And uh, mm -hmm. I was kind of looked like a hippie then, or I was like wearing a jean jacket and I had long hair, you know. And like, and she, you know, and she kind of looked at me and she's like, "You know who Patti Smith is?" And then she kind of took me under her wing and like just turned me on to like a ton of music. Um, actually, I should say her name because I should give her credit. Her name's Abby Michaels, and she went on to um, she was she's a also a recording artist. And she goes by Azalea Snail. I don't know if she's doing much these days, but she did a lot like back in the 90s and stuff. And um, so she turned around to like X-ray specs and like all the you know newest punk stuff and you know Jonathan and also Jonathan Richmond and Lou Reed. Like you, she listened to Lou Reed and these are like important people. And then mm -hmm. we had a little band together and you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So that's kind of the, that's the long answer, the long version. Yeah. Are there current musicians today, female-wise, that you listen to that our readers might be interested to know about? Um, there's some really cool bands in um in Boston. There's a, a really cool band called Banditas mm -hmm. that I, I like a lot, and um, they're kind of uh, they change a lot. They're kind of like it's three women now. It wasn't always three women, but now it is, and um. They, they write incredible, like just like songs that you're just like, this must be a cover, and then it's not. It's kind of mm -hmm. kind of country a little bit, but and but not really country. Definitely sort of got a lot of gutsy, and they they're really great. And there's also another another all girl band. I should say all girl, but it's because they're not really girls. But called Fur Purse, mm -hmm. which I think that's like the best name <laughs> for like a band that's anyway. But yeah. they are like fantastic, and the lead singer Eve like like sings and plays sax, and is just like totally like one of almost like a Lydia lunch kind of like that kind of mm -hmm. attitude and um and then great drummer and like great guitar player mm -hmm. Amy Tyson's the guitar player I forget the name of the drummer but she's amazing um so 
Yeah, and then I know in 98 you were on a tour that the Indigo Girls started called the Suffragette Sessions. Yeah. Which sounds really cool. It was all a bunch of different women, yep. independent mostly women, right? Who were yeah, it was. Doing this tour. And have you been approached to do something like that again, or would you consider that again? Um, I mean, I would consider it. That was, I think that was just definitely really a moment in time. And it, uh, because I think like all that Lilith stuff was happening and was like huge at the Lilith Fair. And, right. like, um, seems like it was maybe the antithesis of Lilith Yeah, Fair, well, and there was like all these yeah. like sort of, remember it was like that big thing, these all women festivals right. and like, who, who was the artist that started that again? Um, Sarah McLaughlin. Lilith yeah, Fair. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that was sort of the impetus of, let's do that, but like, it'll be kind of like a Rolling Thunder review. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't my idea at all, so I shouldn't put words in Amy Ray and yeah. Emily's idea. And then I was really surprised to that they, to be asked, I had no connection to them. Mm -hmm. you know, I knew who their music was, but we didn't, we didn't have any mutual friends, and they'd never come seen any of my shows, as far as I knew. But I think they actually had seen a show. But anyway, they contacted me, and um, it seemed like a blast. You yeah. know, like it was an incredible like variety of people. Yeah. It was me, Gene Smith from Mecha Normal, um, the bass player from who played with David Bowie, cool. um, Josephine Wiggs too, right? Josephine Wiggs yeah. from the Briefs and Kate. Schellenbach from uh, Luscious Jackson cool. and um, um, oh, I'm, I, mean, I don't want to start Lourdes Perez who's like this amazing Puerto Rican singer guitarist um, Jean Sibbery who wrote like she played with Katie Lang and she's a Canadian person um, Lisa um, what's her name Lisa Germano mm -hmm. and I don't know. I don't, I'm gonna leave that. There's a ton yeah. of people, but It'd it was be great like to have it was a really again. bizarre like yeah. <laughs> group of people. I'm like I'd never been on a tour bus before. A lot of us never had been, and we were oh, just really? like, wow, this is crazy, you know. And like it was, it was really fun. I mean, I, I just like playing music, so yep. of course it's it's fun. It was it was strange though. It was um, being in that kind of situation, being kind of like kind of like like a rock star for a day, even though. You totally weren't, but I mean, the it was, you know, like autograph seekers, not for us, but for them, you know, like for the Indigo Girls, because they were like huge then, yeah. when they, the time when they did that, and I don't know, they probably yeah. still are, they've got definitely a niche audience, but... Well, and then just lastly, I know you've had a really long, awesome career in music, do you have any advice to give to, we have a lot of musicians who read our site as well, um, any advice to give to aspiring musicians, female or otherwise, about what they can do to sort of especially in this industry, sort of make their mark. Yeah. Um, well, I think just have fun. That would be my advice. And, um, you know, don't let yourself get frustrated. <laughs> I mean, there can be, it, everything is very cyclical. So like, you're gonna have, there'll be up times, there'll be down times, and you really, you know, need to be doing it because it's what you love to do and keep that you know, keep that in mind, and um, mm -hmm. and don't give up. I think like a lot of people give up, and um, you know, just that that would be my advice. Awesome. Well, that's very good advice. And everyone, <laughs> pick up six. And thanks for talking with us. Yeah. Thank you. It's a pleasure.